Hello, today I will be demonstrating how to colour an example from the Colouring Heaven Collection issue 41 stained glass flowers. I will mainly be using Prismacolor pencils plus a couple of Caran d'Ache Pablos but you can use any type of pencil, just pick similar colours. I'm going to show you some techniques that will bring a different dimension to what can be very simple designs. I'm going to start by adding a three-dimensional effect to the lead that runs between the panes of glass. I'm using the Caran d'Ache Pablos for this. Uh, this is because they've got a harder consistency than the Prismacolors and it's easier to sharpen them to a really fine point because you do need a sharp pencil for doing this stage. Now I've used a lot of colours for this design so I'm not going to call them all out but they will be listed in the description box below the video. So as I always say the first thing to do is to think about the light source. So as this is a window the light is going to be falling from above and then coming through the window. So this means that the pieces of lead pointing upwards will be highlighted. So that's these areas here. And the pieces of lead pointing downwards, these places, these ones here, will be black. So I'm using a grey for the bits pointing upwards. So here we go. So you just go around doing a thin line all the way around. Then underneath, we go in with a, with a black. Don't worry about getting this perfectly even because lead isn't even. Now, where the um, lead is curving away from the light, for example here, so this bit is away from the light, so that bit is going to be black, then it turns towards the light, so this section is going to be grey, and likewise this bit here is facing the light, so it's going to be grey, as it curves round going to become black. There we go. So I'm just going to carry on and um, colour a section using these principles. Now where it comes to the vertical ones, I'm going to assume that both sides are catching a bit of light. So I'm going to do both sides grey. I'm just going to turn the paper around to do this bit. I'm going to use my Faber-Castell drafting brush now just to get rid of any odd bits of pigment that have flaked off. Now that's as far as I'm going to go with the um, lead effect. Um, hopefully you've got the gist of it by now. So I'm going to go on and start with colouring the glass. So the key points uh, to remember for stained glass is that it's translucent and it has really saturated colours. So I'm going to start off by looking at a blending method 
and after that I'm going to go on and look at applying textures and other effects. So I'm going to do my rose in shades of pink and purple. Now to start with you want to use your lightest colour, use a very light pressure and apply a layer all over the glass. Now I'm using small circular movements here to get a nice smooth finish. There we go, so I'm going to do both these petals in pink. In fact, I'm going to do this one as well. Then do a graduated blend using gradually darker colours. Now the darker shades um, are going to be round the edge because we're working on the basis that the colour is going to be darkest around the edges where the lead is and it's going to be more translucent in the middle. However, the a light area doesn't have to be exactly in the middle for each pane of glass because each piece of glass will have slightly different properties and will be different thicknesses. So here we go, I'm starting with a darker shade of pink. I'm working from the edge inwards. So it's darkest around the edge and then I'm gradually reducing the pressure so that the colour lightens and then blends into the middle. And then, as I've said, the colours are really saturated, so I'm going to go around the edge with an even darker shade. This is just going to be around the very edge. And again, lighten the pressure so that it blends, gradually blends in. It's a little bit uneven, so I'm going to go over it with the lighter colour just to smooth it all out. There we go. And now I'm going to do a similar thing with these other two petals. So I've already done the lightest shade. I'm going to go around with the darker one. So I'm just going to carry on and colour these other two remaining petals. Going to do what I did on the first petal and just go over the edges with the lighter shade to smooth it out. As you can see, once you start putting the colour around the edges, the um, three-dimensional effect on the stained glass really starts to show up. Right, that's a little bit uneven. I'm just going to put a bit too much pigment on there, so I'm going to dab at it with this putty rubber. Um, what the putty rubber does is it just lifts a little bit of pigment off the paper. And then I'm going to go over that with the lighter colour. Now the next thing to do uh, is to burnish. So each time you've finished a pane of glass you can burnish it. I'm using a um, Derwent burnisher here. 
and this will give you a smooth glass-like finish. Now a burnishing pencil is hard and colourless and what happens is you rub the surface like this and it brings out the shine of the pencil. Now this is different from blending. Um, when you blend, you use a different pencil um, and you rub the surface to mix the colours together. So that technique doesn't give you the shiny finish that you get when you burnish. Yeah, so you don't want to use the um, alcohol-based blender pens for this stage either. Now, of course, with glass, um, you can really put in any coloured panel of glass that you want to. So for the next part of the uh, rose, I'm going to go for a more purple colour of petal. So I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going in with my lightest shade. I'm going to use a bit of a pink shade on the top. And again, you can, you can kind of mix up the colours as well. So I'm going for a sort of pinker shade on that side. And then a more purpley shade over on this side. Because glass can be all sorts of different colours. more of the pink shade on over the top I think. You can bring it together, smooth it with the lightest shade. And then go over it with the burnisher. So I'm going to do the same for this petal. I'm going to do the same again, I think. I'm going to put in a slightly pinkish colour. You can really mix up any colours that you want to. I'm keeping to quite well, reasonably realistic colours for this rose, but you could make it any colour that you wanted. And then going in with the dark purple. A bit more of the dark pink. And burnish. The other thing that burnishing does is it really brightens the colours as well. Now for the centre, I'm going to do a darker purple. So I'm starting off with my light colour, but I'm actually putting on a little bit more pressure to make it a little bit darker. Let's do all three of these. So, uh, take the dark purple. this one so you can see the difference. So I'm just going over this one with the dark pink. I'm going to leave these two purple so I'll just smooth them out with the lightest shade and then we'll burnish again. This one's still looking a little bit uneven so I'm just going to go but I'm going to sharpen my pencil and go over it again. So this sharpener is um, specifically designed for Prisma colour pencils. And it's quite a good idea to use if you've got, except it does tend to fall apart a bit, but it's quite a good one to use if you've got Prisma colours because they do break a little bit more easily than some other pencils and if you try and use them in a standard pencil sharpener it can be a bit tricky there you go so I'm going to get really dark 
into the corners, creating contrast with the lighter area in the middle. And there you can see, as we're getting into the darker colours, the um, three-dimensional effect of the lead is really standing out there. So that's all I'm going to do of the flower at the moment. I'm going to look at doing the background now. So the next thing I'm going to look at is the background. Again, you can do the background in whatever shade you like. Um, I'm thinking as it's the sky, I am going to keep with some bluish, greenish colours. So I'm going to start off with, I'm going to start off using, um, this is actually a light aqua. And what I'm going to do with these panels is I'm going to do what I've done previously, um, dark around the edges and lighter in the middle. But I'm going to mix up different colours in the same pane of glass. So I'm starting with blue over here, or greeny blue, but then I'm going to put in more of a green colour over here. And then I'm going to blend them together in the middle. Then I'm going to take a darker colour to go around the edges. I think I'm going to use this, a darker shade of aqua blue here. Then I'm going to go more of a darker green here, perhaps putting in a darker shade as well. There we go. So that's actually looking a bit too dark, so again I'm going to lift a little bit of my putty rubber. One thing I always end up, when I'm doing a colouring with lots of colours like this, I always end up with almost my entire pencil collection in my hand. Then on this section, I'm starting with the aqua blue again. So I'm keeping the whole panel blue this time, a bluish, greeny blue. So next of all, I'm going to just burnish these two. And the next panels I'm going to do with a more standard blue shade. So I'm still going to start with the light aqua colour. Uh, this is a blue shade with no greenish hint at all. I'm going to use this colour in all these three panes. And burnish. For some reason, the blue shades brighten up more than the others when you burnish them and then I'm just going to fill in I might put a little bit of darker blue around the edges here just 
just a touch. So I'm going to do this last section in the greeny blue shades. What you have to think is how all the panes fit together. So you could work out quite a complex pattern of how the different colours and shades of the panes fit together. rubber and then blend it. So that's as far as I'm going to go with the blending technique. What I have got here is um, a piece of colouring that I did earlier on so you can see how it all uh, fits together. So I've done the whole of the flower in the shades of the pink and the purple. And then I've kept the background in the blues and green shades. Um, and then I've also done, see the stalk and the leaves in different shades of green. And um, the border here, I'm going to show you this technique in a bit. And then down this side, I've kept the blending technique. What I've actually done here is I've done a darker area in the middle, um, which you can do when you've got a long piece like this. I've assumed that the glass is thicker here than it is at each end, which will make it a little bit darker. So now that I've looked at uh, blending, I am now going to go on and look at different textures. So the next thing I'm going to show you is, um, as I was just saying, the vertical ripple texture. So I'm going to start with the uh, mid-tone um, and I'm going to use that. So we're mapping out really where we're going to have our ripples. And I'm using directional strokes here don't need to be exact about this. Let's put them in fairly randomly. I think I'm going to have a thicker block of them here. And some coming up from the bottom. Then I'm going to take the lightest colour, which is the uh, yellow. And I'm doing what I've done with the blended panes here. I'm covering the whole thing with the lightest shade. Carrying on with the lightest shade, I'm going to darken just around the edges, make it a little bit darker. So we still get the lighter area in the middle. Keeping with the lighter shade, I'm also going to go over where we put in the ripples. I think I'm going to widen this bit out a little bit more with the orange and then go in with a dark colour, a ready orange colour. So don't go over all of the orange with it. This is just emphasizing. So we're putting in one or two darker ripples, I'm making this bit near the edge a bit darker. 
then this thicker area of ripple. Go and have a few more red stripes in it. Do a little bit more work with the orange. I think as the light's coming from this direction, I'm going to do a little bit more orange along the top edge. So a little bit more here, a bit more of a ripple going down here. There we go. And that is a vertical rippled effect. So the next texture I'm looking at is dimpled. So the next thing I'm going to look at is the dimpled textures that you can get. I'm going to use a different part of this design that I'm working on. I'm going to show two different sorts. So to start with, let's look at a reference photo. As I always say, if you're trying to get particular effects, it's a really good idea to look at a reference photo, which you can find from copyright free websites like Unsplash or Pixabay. So what I'm going to look at is this sort of a dimple um, where it uh, fades from dark and then a fairly random dimple pattern there. So I'm going to use different colours here. I'm going to start with blue. So I'm going to do this on one of the longer side panels. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to colour this panel blue. I'm going to start with the base layer of colour because dimples are created by shadows. Basically the dimpled pattern on the glass creates shadows which make parts of the glass look darker than others. So I'm going to start with the base colour of the glass and then I'm going to use a darker shade to mark in the patterns of the dimples. So you just want to get a nice smooth colour. I'm going to take a darker blue. In fact, this is one of the darkest blues I've got. I'm going to start at this end. So this end is completely in shadow. So because the whole lot's in shadow, you don't see any of the dimple pattern, then we'll gradually see the pattern, the pattern emerging. So what I'm doing to start with, I'm marking on where the pattern's going to be. And then I'm going to bring this down. And with the first view, it's still going to be mostly in shadow, with just a few of the, oh, let's shade that a little bit darker. So this bit is going to be mostly in shadow with just a few of the lighter blue highlights showing. And then as we move down, let's put a bit more darken up there. As we move down, we'll gradually 
have less of the dark blue background and the dimples will be more spread out. And as there's more light, they're going to almost disappear. So I'm just going to darken up these first ones a little bit more, to make this even darker. So the next dimple I'm going to demonstrate is um, sometimes the dimples themselves um, are actually the pattern. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. I'll just colour again. I'm going to colour this in the base colour. So I'm sticking with the blue. And then Taking the dark blue again, I'm going to do more of a pattern of dimples that kind of fit together, making a pattern. So these dimples, rather than just being random, are actually making, making a pattern. So you just make these larger shapes, and as you draw and colour the shape, you want to keep the outline quite dark and then fill it in making it a bit lighter in the center and as you can see what we're doing is we're leaving this little network of light lines between them so for this one i'm assuming actually that the light is coming more from the side and what i'm going to do is i'm going to have some darker here and then gradually fading over to this side. I guess it's a little bit like a leopard skin print. And then what I'm going to do is as we move over to the area where it's going to be lighter, what I'm actually doing here is I'm doing a dark line on this side. So on these ones, it's got dark lines all the way around. But what I'm doing now is I, I'm not putting a dark line on this side. I'm doing more of a fade. Then over here, I'm making the whole thing lighter. So I'm putting in lighter lines with a fade. So you don't have to do this fade effect if you don't want to. You could keep your glass with that pattern all the way over. There we go. I'm just going to add to that effect by doing a little bit of shading over here with very light pressure because this is quite a dark shade of blue. So that the whole of this side is a little bit darker than that side. There, I think that's finished. So that is two different textures and there are masses more textures that you could use. So just look on the internet and find some reference photos to work from. Now the next thing I'm going to look at is patterns. And this reference photo is a lovely example of all sorts of patterns that you can get on stained glass. This glass is a little bit more opaque than some of the other ones that we've been looking at. 
so the patterns are showing really brightly. I'm not going to do all of them, I'm going to demonstrate just a couple of them and I've actually, what I've done is I've already drawn out some of them so you can see the effects that we're going for and then I'll just show you how I achieved it. So here we go. I've got uh, three different three different textures, three different patterns from the glass I've gone for. Gone for that one, that one, and then these blue ones over here. So I'm going to start with the reddish coloured ones and I'm going to do it on this petal. So I started off by putting on a base colour. So it's really just a question of observing the pattern that you're working from and trying to reproduce it. So the next stage is I'm going to go in with a dark uh, red to mark in where they, because the, these patterns are kind of swirls. So I'm going to mark in where I want my swirls to be. I'm using quite a light pressure for the time being. is I'm actually combining a couple of the different patterns that I've seen on here. Pattern's going to work. And what I'm going to do now is with a more orangey tone, I'm going to just build up a bit of depth. So that's not quite orangey enough. Let's go for actual orange. a darker red and then it's just a question really of building up the pattern gradually as you see it on your example. I think it just needs to sharpen. that shade of red's quite dark enough so I'm going to pick up a slightly darker one. That's better.
not the yellow in some places. I'm going to leave one or two places where the yellow is light. So we still got get that effect of the light shining through. And I'm going to leave this a little bit lighter. Now the last thing to do is put in some of these really dark areas. So there won't be very many of these. There isn't really any principle underlying how this pattern goes, just how it looks in your source image and you want to make it look as vibrant as possible. There, so I think that's the swirly one done. Now we're going to look at how to do this one. And uh, I'm going to start with quite a dark, reddy colour. I'm going to go with this colour, which is, this, this colour is called Henna. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, a shading similar to that one. So these areas are the darkest and then we've got some light bits here and then that area is going to be a purple shade. So I'm going to leave those bits uncolored for the time being. I'm going to do the darkest areas with uh, this very dark. It's the same same one as I used here. It's actually called black grape. I'm going to put the purpley shade in here in the corner. These are slightly different colours, but don't worry about it. Just shows that you don't have to use exactly the same colours as me to get the same effect. And I'm going over with a more of a ready shade here. So I'm going to burnish where we've got to so far and then I'm going to put a little bit more texture on it. As you can see here it really does bring out the colour on this area. a bit darker then just put some blobs really make that a bit darker put a little bit more of the pink in blend that again to brighten it up So that's that one. And then lastly, I'm going to look at this. It's really just a combination of uh, different uh, kind of stripes in um, varying shades from blue. I don't know if this one shows up very well. That's a kind of sandy shade. Um, I'm going to do it, let's find a little space. So I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it here. 
So I'm starting off, I'm going to start off, I don't need any of those colours, so let's get rid of them. to start by start with some stripes so this goes in a slightly different order to how we've been approaching previously with for example the blending which that needs to be a slightly brighter blue let's go yeah let's go with a slightly brighter shade stripes I'm going to fade away let's bring them up again a little bit generally they're going to get a little bit smaller and then this area so I'm coloring this with a more violety color is the background to these stripes as well so the whole thing comes together I'm leaving a lighter area in the middle but I think what I'm going to do with the stripes is I'm actually going to carry them on a little bit but um, make them fainter over I'm going to use more of a violety colour for this so I'm trying to get a bit uh, of a different shade in this area right so this is actually softer and less well defined general shading So we've got a mix here of violets and blues. You can just go on playing with this. But I think I'm going to stop there. 
So the last thing I'm going to show you is how to do a vitreous paint effect. And I'm going to use this design that I was colouring earlier on. And now what this is, um, sometimes the artist who creates stained glass will paint detail onto the surface using vitreous paint. I don't know if you can see it very clearly in this example, but you can see here, here, and this is probably, you can probably see this a little bit better. What they've actually done here is they've put the paint on and then they've scraped back into it to give the effect almost like an etching. There we go, all around here. And um, what vitreous paint is, um, it contains tiny glass particles mixed with pigment. And when the glass is fired, it fuses onto the surface and gives this effect of um, shading. Now, I'm going to create this effect using a fine liner. I've actually got a black one here. You can use different colours. This, this colour actually looks more like a, a brownie shade. But I'm just going to show you how you can get that scratched back looking effect with a fine liner. So I'm going to go back to this design that I did earlier on. And um, I'm going to shade the inside of this petal. So we're basically creating black lines. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm making the lines a little bit thicker at the base, perhaps assuming that they haven't scratched right back to where the lead is. Now don't make them all the same, same length. And obviously you'd put them in the areas where you want shadow. So for example, you'd have some down here. In fact, this bit would probably be quite solid. Let's make these a little bit longer to show that this is a darker. And then this end, it will be a little bit smaller, I think. Then you can also put in some dots, perhaps show where we haven't quite managed to scratch off all of the paint. There. That is uh, how to get the vitreous paint effect. And uh, that's it for this demonstration. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out on future videos.